Jefferson County Board of Education for April 16, 2024. We'll stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and we do have a full agenda this evening. Uh, I'd ask everyone to uh, silence their cell phones so we don't have that in the middle of the meeting. So, and with that, as we do have a full house and we have a lot on the agenda, uh, we have some recognitions. Uh, I just ask everyone to to. Uh, Stay civil and 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 when speakers are speaking to respect what they're speaking about and and uh, let them speak without any interjection. So, with that, uh, it brings us down special recognitions and presentations and Stephanie Runyon with the recognition of Harrison County Young Writers contest winners. Thank you. Hello. My name is Stephanie Runyon and I'm the curriculum specialist for English language arts. Um, for elementary schools. And beloved children's book author Beverly Cleary once said, if you don't see the book you want on the shelf, write it yourself. <laughs> the students that we are getting ready to honor tonight can do just that. At this time, I would like to honor and recognize the 2024 Harrison County winners of the West Virginia Young Writers Contest. Representing first and second grades is Avery Stanton. Come on up, Avery. This is a certificate from the Harrison County Schools that says West Virginia Young Writers Contest. The Harrison County Schools certificate is proudly presented to Avery Stanton for her accomplishment of winning the 2020. 324 Harrison County Schools Young Writers Contest for grades one and two. So, congratulations. Mm -hmm. You want to turn it around? You're going to stay right there. <laughs> the second grade student at St. Mary's Grade School, and her teacher is Christine Manel. Is her teacher? Yes. Representing grades three and four, our winner is Ian Stemple. <laughs> and it's also a certificate for winning the Young Writers for third and fourth day. So congratulations. And do we have your family here? Somewhere. Hey. <laughs> Ian is a student at Johnson Elementary School and his teacher was Mary Lee Smith. Mary. Representing fifth and sixth grade is Gabby Perlera from Johnson Elementary. School. Congratulations, Gabby, for winning for fifteen your certificate. We're really proud of you. And do you have family here? Mm -hmm. Raise your hand. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Representing seventh and eighth grade is Lucas Messenger from South Harrison Middle School. His teacher is Sarah Todd. Kate's teacher is Miss Lennon. <coughs> this 
Representing 11th and 12th, excuse me, 11th and 12th grade is Gretchen Beauty. Congratulations, Gretchen. She just won a uh, Harrison County scholarship. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just Sunday. <laughs> awesome. These are our 2024 Harrison County winners of the West Virginia Young Writers Contest. Hey guys, scooch in just a little bit. Scooch in, scooch in. There you go. Congratulations. These seats are no longer reserved, so if anyone wants a seat. Yeah, you have to be a writer, but. That moves us down to item four delegations. We do have several delegations this evening. Remind speakers that uh, each of you have five minutes. There's a clock. Uh, and uh, we'll begin with our delegation. So uh, first up, they are in order of uh, which we, we receive those. So uh, Wayne Schumann. much to say this evening genuinely so it won't take the whole five minutes um just a couple bullet points um over the weekend i really thought about it like if i was up there how i vote um but truthfully i kind of come to a consensus because there's not enough questions answered not enough facts and a lot of the information is all messed up because i went through the plan multiple times over the weekend and i still can't figure out the numbers part so i don't know how we're voting on something we're not entirely sure on either um, there's still, there's not a name change in it. Um, there's no, we can't assure that the special education department will be hundred percent and everyone's needs will be met even because there's still no questions answered. Um, I did, I've multiple times I've asked to be, you guys be in the school, see what's going on, ask the students, ask the teachers publicly, not just in a meeting in December, November, because you know, those are old questions that we asked, but we have new questions that we still want to answer. <laughs> You see, all, all the Salem people, a good bit of the Salem people are here. Um, that's what they have left for them. So just keep them in the back of your head. That's what Salem has. And I genuinely think if you would end up closing Salem, that building should be spot up by a charter, and they're going to put it over there for the Dodgers, Richie, and Harrison students. Even if you guys don't want to admit it, it's the kind of sad truth. They bought it at them. Um, the impact statements, we've, we've heard many delegations the past couple days, many delegations. So there's obviously an impact somewhere, not 
there's no impact. All the schools are in the close range of each other. They're certainly in the close range, but there's still an impact. I mean, come on, what's impact mean? Just take, take it lightly, like genuinely think about it this evening. Think about the teachers, the staff, the students, and, spe and especially the special needs students. Thank you. <laughs> question is, have you guys been in contact with local police departments and fire departments on what our plans would take place if something, heaven forbid, if ever would happen by combining these schools? Have you discussed with them about their short staff police department in our area already, and how is it impossible to keep our children safe at the same time? Currently, there are only two officers covering the whole county per shift. Are you expecting to pull an all available sh sheriff off the streets and monitor these schools? If that's the case, can you imagine the crime our town will have? They have enough on their hands. I understand there's a code that can be used to notify us off-duty cops to get there ASAP, but I'm talking on a daily basis, especially with Bird and Liberty. For example, you had all these school hearings and you only had the cops at Liberty during our hearing. Why? Look at me, ask me or answer me that, why? Why just Liberty? Is it sickening how you and made Liberty out to be such horrible people? Have you came to a sporting event between these two rivals? They've had to pause a basketball game for a student from the Bird section, to walk across the court to if one of the students to fight her. The pro officer for Liberty had to give her a warning and she didn't stop, she was out of there. We played them at football season where a fight happened under the bleachers where us parents were sitting. Them kids do not care. It was their territory and their field. We didn't belong. Our band members were forced, meaning most didn't want to have dinner with their band members before the game. We asked and Liberty were forced to combine our band members together to perform the halftime show that night. Liberty is named for their fight song, for we fight on. We were not allowed to play our fight song for walking off the stage like we have every halftime show for that was disrespectful to RCB. How about... How disrespectful for you all to force such behavior on our kids. Our kids have no say in anything when it comes to RCB. They are supposed to be like little puppets, like our board members, and follow their lead. I think not. They have always been rival schools, but you all have made them out to be enemies. Nowadays, kids are out for blood, not just disagreement. These things happen every time these two schools are together. As a parent, I ask you to vote no on this consolidation. I'm telling you to keep these kids safe and let them have the education they need to conquer their adulthood. They are our community's future. We as parents are concerned with the safety of our children. If you get yes, and God forbid, nothing would, but if it would happen, you need to understand one thing right now. I ask you to all to not only look at myself, but look at the community behind me. We are trying to stop something from happening to our children before it's too late and what ifs take place. If you get yes, I want you to understand. We ask you to not do this if something would happen. The liability is on you. You would be responsible for that. For us as parents and community, we have asked, begged, and plead for you not to put our children in that situation. I noticed you didn't even take consideration on discussing anything with the mayors or city council of Clarksburg and Salem. They've had to come to the hearing to discuss their matters with you all. I'd like to thank both of those city mayors and speaking their concerns during our, those hearings. After Thursday's meeting in Salem, God showed you another sign on what happens when you mess with a small town. You cannot tell me any different. God has ways of showing people right from wrong, and he definitely did that after that meeting. You will reap what you sow. Within two hours after that Salem meeting, families were being evacuated out of their homes due to flooding. Have you ever taken into consideration that Salem Elementary School was then a safe place for these families to go in time of need? Where would the emergency shelter be in Salem if you vote yes? Where Were you guys scared Thursday night for those people in Salem, or did you block it out like you do when we talk to you? How about yourself? You should have been. Do I blame you all for the flooding? Absolutely not. You all don't have that much power. Have you noticed how these small towns might not have much, but what do you have is a small town that comes together in some of the life's toughest moments. We fight for what we have and what we want our families. They consider consolidation in these schools is not one of them. By Thursday's flooding, did it cross your mind that if this happened during school hours, would you be able to each get each one of those kids back to their homes before their kids, those roads were closed? How long is this advance would you need to dismiss school in such a way that not only buses, but the student drivers, parents pick up, as well as teachers and staff. You are going to have a traffic jam as everyone will be hurrying to get out of the entrance out of those schools quickly. This is not just adding flooding, it's about all weather conditions. I would like to thank Mr. Tucker for being on the board, taking on two positions to stay afloat. You have looked at each one of us and took in our consideration. I appreciate that as a parent. If it wasn't for you, Mary wouldn't have a clue. At Salem's meeting, Mr. Tucker reached out to get papers from one of our speakers and Mary nudged you in the arm with a nip. 
There have been several nods for notes from her to Tucker. When taking notes that lead follows Tucker, then you are so confused on what to say when it's time for you to speak. When you spoke about the school levy and you had no idea what the levy is for and what it actually goes towards, asking Sutler on the end to explain that was such an embarrassing, not only for yourself, but for us as a community, for we voted for you to be in that position that you have no clue about. Talking about ex expense, expenses and passing the bucket down to Mr. Lopez to explain the background of your article in which at Northview's hearing, you had said, I'm, going, I'm not going to talk much of this stuff. Excuse you, this stuff is not only my child, but for every child in those six schools. If you do not like children, then you should pick a different occupation. You quoted, I don't know the particulars and expenses, then why are you putting that in an article for Clarksburg Community to read? Ms. Thompson, five minutes. I just had a few minutes. Um, what do you Ms. know when it comes to your Ms. job Thompson, and the requirements? I'm sorry, I mean, okay. five minutes. That's fine. Kimberly McLeod. Again, my name is Kimberly McLeod. Some of you recognize me. I'm Northview Elementary School PTA president. I'm also a mom of two students who attend Northview, and I am a staff member at Northview. Just a few things I want to touch on. At the PTA meeting, I mean, at the meeting, the PTA asked you guys very specific questions in regards to the consolidation plan that was left at the school. We have not received a response yet. How can we vote on something that we don't even understand? We don't understand the money aspect. We don't understand how money could be $58,000 to fix at our school, but fixtures be $500,000. Plumbing fixtures. That is toilets. That is sinks. That is faucets. How does that money math work? Also, I'd like to speak on behalf of my kids. Kids. Both have IEPs. My youngest has a speech impediment. She gets ELA and has services from school. My oldest kid is who I'm concerned about. My oldest kid has a speech impediment, receives ELA services, math services, and vision services through the school. My child is losing her sight. My child is also immune compromised. I'm very concerned about her moving on to middle school with almost a thousand kids, and how it's gonna impact health. She has already missed so much of school due to being exposed to these things. So I have to then consider, do I start homeschooling? Do I look at those private schools? These are things that I have to take into consideration for my children. Have you thought about that and how that's going to impact those special education kids in those classrooms? I also wanted to point out one other thing. Mr. Jerry, Jerry, can you raise your hand? He's in the back. He passed around a news article earlier and it made this really great suggestion. What if you didn't close both elementary schools? Because Salem, as you heard, is an evaluation site in case of natural disasters. That's a possibility. Last week. What if you took Liberty and put it in a mountaineer school? Kept it at Liberty High for those students and those teachers there in that community and moved WI and Mountaineer together at Liberty. And give us time to look for land for Northview to get a new school because you're absolutely correct. Our school is an older school that has been nearly neglected over these past few years. Consolidating Merging RCB and Liberty together, why not simply change the name? We're not asking for new colors. We're not asking for a new map. We're simply asking for a new name. Clarksburg High School is like an amazing name. I do have a report high. Thank you for your time. I really hope that you take the time to think about our students that we have, and our staff that we have. Thank you. Good evening. As many of the people who would be affected 
why the proposed merger consolidation have stated for some time now. This is not a good plan for many reasons, and you've heard those reasons from all of the community multiple times over and over. There are many other options that would solve the problems of the dilapidated schools that do need replacement. And smaller schools are just better on so many levels. The citizens of Harrison County have always supported the school system. It's time you show your support of them. I'm asking that you take a step back, rethink, and really look at the options. The students, teachers, staff, parents, and community members affected by your decisions are all hoping and praying that the words have not gone unheard. And as our education leaders for this county, that you are listening and these meetings that we've all sat through and this vote is not just for show. It's a great day to be a Mountaineer. Good evening. You know, as I look around the room tonight, I see a community. Not just Clarksburg, I see Salem, Northview, Adamson, Jarvisville, Marshville, Lake Floyd, Wilsonburg, Sun Valley, and many other areas in between. And then I see board members. And what you don't understand is the decision you make tonight can either improve or kill these communities. And that's what it's about, plain and simple. There was an article in the paper yesterday, and I'm not sure who the author was, but the author said something along the lines of, you know, it's not the board's job to save a community. It's the board's job to make a decision on the best interest of the student. Well, you know, I agree. It is the board's job to make a decision on the best interest of its students. And that's not just one portion of the county, that's all of Western Harrison County as well. Please tell me this. Tell me how leaving students on the bus for longer periods of time, children in larger classrooms, how reducing athletic and academic opportunity is going to benefit the students in Harrison County. It's not. Not for the Liberty students or its feeder schools or for the Bird students. You know, it doesn't Enrollment has declined, but it doesn't take a rocket scientist to look at the numbers and realize that the decline in enrollment has not completely mirrored the decline in population. Instead, it's greater. So I ask you this question, why? Is it because many of our schools are at 30% or above or slightly above 30% students that meet grade level? I mean, we learned what a fantastic school Salem Elementary was, and they were doing much better at 52%. Why is this our goal? Why is this the level that we achieve for? Public, public education is free, but as you've heard people say over and over, if we don't make the right decisions, people are going to leave the public education system. And the less people, the less money. Sooner or later, no matter who is for or against it, the levy will, the levy will fail because people are no longer in our system. Let's not give that a chance to happen. You've talked about data, but I've read these impact statement or alleged impact statement and the closure documents. I haven't seen any data. I mean, there's some numbers in there. A lot of them are inaccurate or contradict each other. Let's talk about some numbers that are in there, 34. That's the number of teaching positions that's gonna be reduced. We say there's not enough teachers. Well, let's get rid of 34 of them. What about 20 minutes or longer? That's additional time some of these students are gonna spend on the school bus. You know, let's talk about some real data. There have been all kinds of studies that tell us what consolidation does to your school. And right now, West Virginia, we like to consolidate. It happens all around our state. Yet we're ranked 48 or lower out of 50 states in education. Why do we think that is? You know, there was an article written a couple of years ago and there was research that was done into what happens when we consolidate in West Virginia. Well, 
let's talk about cost. The state, at the time of this article, the state had spent more than $1 billion of consolidation, yet the school building authority acknowledged that it didn't save the taxpayers any money, consolidation. In fact, we spend a higher percentage on maintenance. The number of administrators has increased by 16%, despite only a 13% decline in enrollment. Bus rides are longer. The data goes on and on. Academics are poor, less people, less children go to college, less children score well on their test. You know, the onus is on you this evening. You say that you're here for the best interest of the children. Well, I address each and every one of you. Prove it. Take a step back. Let's look at real data. Let's answer the questions that have been asked for you for months now. Gather it together. See what opportunities and alternatives exist. If there are none, I'll tell you what, your constituents would be much more satisfied that you at least tried. Instead, what they get is you don't care. You know, Mr. Rollins said, and I'll close with this, Mr. Hamrick. Mr. Rollins said, uh, I believe, he talked about bird, and he said, our colors are, I believe it was green and royal blue. He said, we are bird. Well, I'll tell you what, Liberty's colors are red and navy blue, and we are mountaineers, and we fight on. And not changing the colors and the name of that school, you're just forgetting about those kids. Yeah. Yeah. spoke to you guys a few times that uh, on page two of the handbook for the planning school facilities there is a list of guiding principles for an effective and fair program for school facilities the list says nine bullet points the first is educational needs of a student comes first the second point is the students will be educated where they live whenever possible now there's like 200 some pages and i spent all weekend reading that thing and really after that i could have stopped after that and that was right at the introduction where the students will be educated is where they live whenever possible. I think it's possible to keep these kids educated where they live now. Um, over the past week, I have found locations for new schools that meet the requirements of policy 6200. Again, that's another policy 6200 is like ingrained in the back of my head. I've read it too much. I don't want to read it anymore. But I've talked, we worked with the city, um, the public works uh, director, our economic developer, city manager. We have found locations. We have talked to landowners. They are ready to talk to you guys. Um, these land locations meet the requirements. Um, the city, of course, will be releasing our economic development strategic plan this Thursday, and new schools are a part of that plan. As you all know, schools, especially new schools, play pivotal roles in economic development. Come with us. Be a part of the rebuild of the biggest city in the county seat of Harrison. When Carson thrives in town, the entire county thrives. Thank you. Um, please don't start my time yet. Um, I'm recovering from an accident, and um, my mom may take over uh, reading for me if I need to. Good evening, Superintendent Stutler and members of the board. My name is Ashley Robinson, and I've been a teacher at Liberty, my alma mater, for the past 17 years. Coincidentally, 17 of my family members are also alumni. Liberty is my home, and our staff is my family. While I could spend all evening appealing to your emotions, that's not why I'm here tonight. In education, we make decisions based on research and facts. So let's look at the facts. One, consolidation doesn't save money. According to a study published by the Journal of Research in Rural Education, quote, findings have shown that consolidated school districts incur no overall physical advantages while possibly sacrificing both student achievement 
and community support. When you factor in the costs associated with moving and transferring all the equipment and materials, increased transportation costs, and fuel prices and bus maintenance aside, do we even have enough bus drivers? Will we need to hire more? And how much will increase in personnel costs? Upgrades to receiving buildings to meet the needs of programmatic levels. Uh, it must also be considered that administrators at the newly consolidated schools will be paid more as their pay increases with the student enrollment and the number of staff supervised. All this combined with money spent to build additional classrooms, cafeterias, playgrounds, et cetera, it sounds like a pretty high cost right up front. Um, and any savings seen initially will ultimately disappear after about 10 years, according to AASA, which is the School Superintendents Association. Number two, consolidation will lead to further reduced enrollment in our public schools. Families choose private, virtual, and home schools due largely to the smaller class sizes and greater <coughs> sense of community. Removing schools from our communities will increase class sizes reducing the amount of one-on-one -on -one attention, direct instruction, and personal connection that our students so desperately need, especially our special education population. Consolidation will increase student anonymity, thus increasing the number of at-risk students. It's already too easy for students to get lost in the crowd and fall through the cracks. I don't want to imagine the effects of a larger population on our students. If consolidation occurs, will the vacant buildings be sold? Will they be purchased and turned into more charter or private schools as we now know the former Adamston Elementary is? More charter and private schools will result in even more students leaving our school system, further leading to more consolidations and potentially a reduction in force. Number three, consolidation also reduces property values. Not only do lower property values reduce the levy money received, it also reduces business growth, growth, which even further reduces levy funds collected. It's in our best interest to support and help grow communities as much as possible. Thriving communities equal good schools. Good schools equal successful students. Successful students equal thriving communities. Number four, lastly, Underutilization and reduced enrollment at both Liberty and RCB have been cited as reasons for combining these high schools. So why is Liberty the only high school being closed? Should not both schools be closed if combined in a new school with a new name, new colors, new culture be created? According to state code, school, means the students and teachers assembled in one or more buildings, organized as a unit. If our high schools combine, a new unit, a new school is created. Whether the combining of schools is called a merger or consolidation, it's up to the discretion of the superintendent. There are numerous situations throughout the state that are identical to ours, and they are referred to as consolidations, ensuring fairness and hiring at the newly formed school. So why are you choosing to call our situation a merger? Allowing one school's identity to remain, allowing one school staff to keep all current positions and classrooms and schedules. While Liberty is not only erased, but our staff expected to take on the schedules and duties that are just left over. <coughs> are there enough classrooms and office spaces available for everyone to have their own room like we currently have? Or will some of the Liberty staff have to share classrooms and offices or use a cart to move from class to class like I did my first year teaching at Mountaineer Middle? Why are you choosing? Ms. Robinson, do you, do you want your mother to yield time? Yes. Okay. Sorry, you have no choice. <laughs> <laughs> we can fit us both them. So why are you choosing not to call this a consolidation? If combined, why aren't we planning to do it the right way, the fair way, considering seniority of our employees? I have to say, as a teacher at Liberty, it just feels so disrespectful. It feels like we are less important, less valued than our friends at RCB. In closing, when voting on the proposed consolidations, please consider the facts. No financial savings, decreased achievement, 
decreased community involvement, decreased levy money received, and decreased enrollment, and probably decreased personnel. And if that's not enough to sway you to vote against consolidation, then I respectfully request that Liberty staff be shown more respect by referring to this merger <clears throat> as what it would really be, the consolidation. Thank you. I'm sorry, I'm not a speech writer. I'm not a highly educated person. I am Kim Heinemann. I am Mrs. Robinson's mother. Um, out of 50 kids in our family, husbands, sisters, brother-in-laws, kids, grandkids, all that, three quarters of those people have gone to Liberty in those schools. I wanted to voice my concern over the mergers, merger and consolidations of the different schools. I understand some of the reasons for your actions. However, this plan was proposed 10 years ago. I know as a business owner, I too must weigh options and feel that other steps that can be taken other than the ones that you all have been proposed. I have been told that there would have to be um, alterations and additions to the different schools. I would suggest putting WI at RCB. The school, as you see, has rooms for Liberty students, so they should have rooms for the junior high school. Build them a new school that they will have. You can also redis redistrict some of the students to fill Salem Elementary since it's a newer school. When Mountaineer Middle School was built, it was a bare bones school. Not enough classrooms, or therefore you had cart teachers. Victory Elementary building has had several, or Victory <coughs> Elementary's building has had several um, remodels after Gore was moved. The reason that they supposedly built the new Mountaineer Middle School was because the Board of Education wanted to be moved into the core building for their offices. Come to find out, the deed restricts that property from being used for anything other than educational purposes. Therefore, it was retrofitted to put in the United High School or whatever was in there. And then you had Adamston and Wilsonburg, who both the schools, Wilsonburg, my kids all went there. It's not that bad of a school. Now they have the different schools in that school, and they have everybody down at the old board building, which had to be retrofitted again. And from what I understand from different people, it's not finished. So one lady said Northview. I went to first and second grade in Northview. Third grade, I went to Eastview. I started at Bridgeport when I was in the fourth grade, and I graduated from Bridgeport. Bridgeport High School was a huge school when I graduated from there. I got lost in the shuffle starting in 10th grade. I have, I'm not a test taker. I'm not a person that can read and remember everything. And I just think that it's wrong, not just because of my family and Liberty's ties, but for all the families. You know, first and second grade at Northview, that was 60 years ago. Uh, third grade at, at uh, Eastview, I met Doug Hope. Absolutely fell in love with him when I was in the third grade, and I've known him ever since. <laughs> you know, what can I say? We've done work for um, Mrs. Smith and her family. We've come out and looked at jobs for Mrs. Stutler. Um, you were my son's football teacher, football coach, when he was at Gore. You were Ashley's boss and my son's principal when he was in school. So I really think that instead of voting on this tonight, that you take in everything into consideration, look at some things that can be done and maybe put off the vote until after the election. Toby Knight, and he had Autumn Knight yielding, is that correct? Yeah. 
All right, my name's Toby Knight, and this is, I don't know how many times we've done this now. So how did we get here? On September the 12th, the school board had a special meeting to establish the superintendent goals. The school board went to executive session to determine what those goals were going to be for the year. However, the board did not disclose those goals during that meeting. However, at the close, no, however, at the close of the meeting during the board members comment period, Mr. Hogue um, stated expectations will be fulfilled at the next meeting. It's kind of an unusual statement to be made. On September 19th, the following week, the superintendent requested a special session, work session meeting to discuss school closures, school consolidation, which would take place in only two days on September the 21st. During the meeting on September the 19th, a motion was passed to approve the goals of the superintendent for the September 26th special meeting. And again, at the closing of the meeting, during the board members' comments, Mr. Hogue at the time stated, hope to see more in attendance for Thursday's meeting and also hope individuals will act in a civil manner to achieve a good outcome. On September, 21st, the superintendent made a brief statement on school consolidation with the architect about the schools which would be involved, but there was real no details were provided at that time. Were those details to come in future meetings? We hoped, but we would have to wait and see. But during that meeting, over 30 members of the public spoke during that meeting against school consolidation but very limited discussions amongst the board members occurred at that time. This time, at the board's members' closing comment period, Mr. Devano thanked those in attendance and stated, comments directed towards the board are being heard. As we would learn, there is a great distinction between being heard and listening. On September 26th, more members of the public spoke and commented about consolidation and mergers. But the topic, it wasn't on the agenda for discussion. However, the board approved the superintendent's goals, which included, as you guessed it, school consolidation. That leads me to an interesting question. Does the board work for the superintendent? Or does the superintendent work for the board? At this time, at the board's Comment period, Mr. Hope stated that he would like clarification on the difference between consolidations and mergers. Mr. Devano requested that the board schedule a special work session meeting. Mr. Tucker would like to see Liberty and RCB gather for a meeting to garner insight for the merger. Finally, Ms. Smith and Mr. Hamrick stated they would like a work session with no actions taken, just a discussion among the members. Then, on October the 17th, a special work session meeting was held at RCB Auditorium to discuss school consolidation. Over 40 members of the public spoke in front of the board members on the topic. As we were finally there, we finally observed and actually learned and saw the difference between being heard and listening. Listening it's an active activity that you participate in. You must intentionally put forth effort to pay attention to what is being said with the intended goal to receive and understand said information. Hearing, that's a, pack, a passive activity. It's something that happens in the background without your brain actually thinking about what's going on. During the meeting, the activity of hearing was on full display. I know now, by now, it must sound like a broken record. But again, after the del delegation period ended, there was very limited discussion amongst the board members for even questions. Why? How could that be? It's because individuals were hearing what was being said. They were not listening to what was being said. The board ended the meeting with a motion to move forward with a comprehensive school realignment, realignment update educational facility plan amendments, the planning and completion of closure impact statements, 
and the scheduling of closure hearings. Still not sure when the board members were going to ask questions or even have a debate on the topic. Last week, community meetings started. Not sure what happened to the work sessions as, as was requested by the board members at different times. Maybe nobody was listening to them. And just like before, public speaker after public speaker, and just like before, no substantial or particular informative information or debate was had. But we were provided the closure documents beforehand. This is the document that contains the impact statement, the reason why consolidation must happen. Finally, we're going to get answers. Well, not exactly. But don't people, but don't take that. People don't take what everybody is saying about the closure documents. But go read them for yourself. Then you will have an understanding at just how disappointing and how substandard these documents are. Teachers would require a better effort from students on an educational assignment. Look at the tables. The basic function of addition is incorrect. This is unacceptable, no matter which side of the argument you are on. Are these the documents the board has to make the conclusion on? It has been stated that these documents are the templates. They are, they're the templates provided by the state and that is true. However, the content, the analysis, the completion of the templates, that's us, we own that. It's elementary at best. They neither provide justification as to why consolidation mergers are needed or disproven. Unlike an educational assignment provided by the students, by the teacher, that document is not a learning assignment. It has real world ramifications. I'm assuming this document, it was put together by professionals making over six figures. We as taxpayers, we deserve better. If you cannot get the small details right, how can we believe that the big de details will be correct? Why can't a school system put together a committee that provided calendar options, four of them, but we can't put options together for school consolidation? This decision that has hammered, or sorry, Mr. Hammered, Mr. Duano, Ms. Hogue, or Mr. Hogue, Ms. Smith, and Mr. Tucker is about to make not only, is not only going to put Harrison County on a new course, but is going to put Harrison County itself on a different course. Whether you have students in a public school system or not, this five person school board is getting ready to send us down a new river. Are we heading down a river that's gonna to open to smooth water or are we head, heading for a waterfall? Who knows? You don't know. It would be nice to have a map, but we don't. We don't have a map because you haven't done your jobs. You're rushing into an informed decision. It's not acceptable. A gut feeling is not adequate. We are not choosing what color to paint a bathroom. Accuracy, gathering information, gathering the data, it's required. Discussions on alternatives is needed. A debate must happen. We must stop addressing the symptom and identify the actual problem and treat the problem. During one of the meetings, someone said, this is how government process works. No, this is not how government process works. This is how a banana republic works. We are, where is the accountability? Do the right thing, demand better. The only way that you can make a decision based on the course of events and the data that's presented is that that decision was already made before it ever started. And that is not acceptable. I want somebody that will listen, not hear. I want somebody that will act and not watch. I want somebody that will do what is hard because it was not easy. Thank you. Mike Wayne.
My name is Mike Lane. I'm going to say this again because I'm very proud of it. I was in the first graduating class at Liberty High School. I've spoken at six of these meetings concerning consolidation, merging, and closing of these six schools. Y'all, you folks have disrupted the lives of several students, parents, grandparents, teachers, aides, service personnel, and administrators with these plans. Please understand that the teachers, parents, grandparents, and some of the students are voters also. You vote yes, we can vote no. No for any future school levies or bonds or your continuation on the board. If you vote no to this plan, come up with a levy or a bond to build a new WI middle school, we will vote yes for it. They deserve to have their new middle school as all other middle schools are newer and on their high school campus. How many people in this room would rather see a new WI high school built? Show of hands. Another case, I mean, it's been brought up before, but think about all the extra transportation and manpower that's going to take for the busing of these kids. Another idea that was brought up here was, uh, what about the utilization of this building? Let's look at adding a cafeteria and, and gymnasium right beside here and move WI down here. <laughs> we know that redistricting, redistricting, Redistricting will help you with your utilization numbers, which is your main concern. Just bring the original RW High School area back to RCB and the old Liberty High School area back to Liberty. <laughs> RCB's original area included Quietdale, Craigmore, Bell Meadows Estates, Circle Drive, and all areas Route 20 south to Quietdale, including the community of Johnstown and Brushy Fork Road. Liberty's original area included Route 19 North to Hepsi Ball and Spelter, and also included some of the park. We deserve our schools. Let us keep our schools. Keep Liberty. Final speaker, Gary Rollins. Final speaker. My last. Oh, good. I can go till 11 then. <laughs> as as I within five minutes. <laughs> I don't know which way to go on this because I have some notes and I've listened. And so I'm just going to say things. People are going to get angry. People are going to get mad. People are going to go, he doesn't know what he's talking about. People are going to go, yeah, that's a good idea. So, Whatever shoe you want to wear, wear it. But wear it because I think what I have to say is important, just as everybody else does. Let me clarify something that seems to be bantered around. When we built, I built Robert Seabird High School, it was built for 1,200 kids, and Liberty, I believe, was at 1,000. Place closed. Don't care what this piece of paper says and that piece of paper says. I built the school. There's 1,200 lockers in it. Case closed. It's over. Liberty will fit in the building. Over. The documents say that Liberty High School will merge into Robert C. Byrne High School. You need a definition of merge? Drive down the highway and see what the sign says. When it says merge left, you merge left into the existing road, not a new road. Case closed. The colors are red, white, and blue. Someone said, we're going to change the name and we're going to change the colors. You ain't got enough money. You ain't got enough money. <laughs> I'm speaking. You ain't got enough money to repaint the whole school, reuniform everybody, rebuy all the furniture that's all green and blue. Oh, yeah, let's take up the terrazzo pool that says Eagles in green. 
And this just go on. Oh, yeah, the windows are green, too. Let's just go on and on and on. No problem. Salem, keep your school. You need that school. When I, when, I worked, when I worked at Liberty High School as a teacher, you know where the best kids came from student-wise? Salem area. Period. And probably still do. Thank you. Thank you. Well, give these guys a break. You know, I can't help it because a former build, board member built the school in Doddridge County, and you all know that. It was built in the wrong location. You know, what are you building it in Doddridge County for? It should have been on the other end of the town. You know, but that's another story. He built Mountaineer Middle, too. But anyway, moving right along. Okay? So, let Northview have their school. No. 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 I'm sorry that you are able to walk your kids to school every day. To, well, nobody else in the county can. Oh, please. Go to Bridgeport during the day direct. when the number of the cards. Please direct it to the chair. I told you some people would be mad and some people would be unhappy. But that's just the way it goes. These people are going to have to make a decision. They will make a decision on whatever they feel is right. I told you, sir, they wouldn't like some of my comments. It's when everyone to be respectful. Someone made a comment the other day that all the monies in regard to athletics, each middle school got X number of dollars. The new middle school is only going to have whatever money is out. Money for levy is allocated per student, not per building. Per student, not per building. Am I going to run out of time? Yeah, probably. Am I going to sit down like a good boy? Yeah. Okay. Don't cut off your nose to spite yourself. Don't vote no for the levy just because you're not happy. Go out and start buying textbooks. Start buying pencils. Start buying uniforms. Start paying to have your athletes play sports. Oh. Ooh. Talk to Preston County. Okay? I'm sorry. Thank you. I made people unhappy. Oh, well. I did it during my job. That concludes, that concludes our delegation for this evening. That's how birds raise liberty. Please, everyone had an opportunity to sign up and speak, and that portion is over. Uh, the remainder of this meeting is, is uh, to be conducted among the board. Uh, so with that, superintendent's update. I have a few um, items. The first item on there, if you'll see under superintendent's update, is the monthly financial report from our treasurer. It's for the um, March 2024. We've been trying to get those for you each month. So is there any comments or anything you need to make? Yeah. I think we've heard enough about facilities, unless Mr. Lopez would like to give us any update. No, that's right. Yeah, and the only other thing I have is we had a UTC meeting uh, last week when Mr. Hogue was there, and I believe he has an update. There were some positive things out of the United Technical Center. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, so the special recognition down at the uh, uh, United Technical Center, uh, they had their skills competition, and there were numerous number of winners, I think almost 200 people, 200 kids that placed in skills competition and there were students from all over the state and it was held in, in Harrison County, Marion County, Mon County, uh, I believe Taylor County. They all came together and showed what they had learned at the, their different schools and awards were handed out. And the United Technical Center had 11 uh, state winners that are going on to the nationals uh, that's going to take place in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, and 
it uh, it speaks in high volumes for you know our United Technical Center. I mean, the number of kids that was on the sheet uh, that won you know gold, silver, bronze medals uh, was was a a big uh, plus for our uh, local uh, United Technical Center, which also encompasses uh, Taylor County and Daugherty County. But the majority was from Harrison County of the winners. Uh, also moving on, uh, the directors this year decided rather than the hand filled out form of kids that wish to uh, attend the career center and try and get in one of the programs, they changed it and they put it online. And normally if you hand fill them out in the schools and what have you and put them in, there's, they have as many as 300 applications. This year, they have already gone over 500, <clears throat> 500 applications for kids that are wanting to get into the Career Center and into the different programs. Uh, the director said it's a good problem to have. Uh, so they're going, you know, they will have to go through, read them, and slot kids in for the uh, different programs that they have. Uh, so pretty much. Uh, that was the highlight of the uh, United Technical Center's meeting. Thank you. That's all I have. Thank you. Princeton item six consent items, uh, motions, for, we need motions for A and B, uh, meeting minutes, financial transactions. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion to approve items A and B, consent items. Second. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, the reason I didn't do C and D, I just wanted to make sure. Were these, this is for uh, contract renewal for precision properties and evergreen lawn care for grass cutting. Is that the entirety of our grass? Yes. Yeah, we, have, we have two contracts. It was a, it's a three-year uh, renewal process. It's Did we have more than that in one drop down or something? Yeah, that was uh, the previous. Okay, yeah. so this time we've used the two and you're fine with, with yes, the job. That, 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 yes, I tell you, we've, we've been those jobs out and we've had a lot of interest. But when it comes down to people actually uh, bidding on those, uh, everybody kind of disappears because it's very fast and it's very difficult for uh, a contractor to stay up with. It. So we're hoping if we bid these out again next year that we can get more people interested break those down a little bit smaller units and, uh, and, and do a little better job, uh, especially when the weather is, is not cooperative. Is there a motion for item C and D? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Um, any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, new business, out-of-state travel study request. Is there a motion? Make a motion to approve the out-of-state study travel request. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> motion carries. Open enrollment transfers, approvals, and denials. Is there a motion? So moved. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item D, uh, there are two CEFP amendments. Uh, one uh, dealing with comprehensive school realignment. The other is the first one. Oh, item C first. Bus driver promissory note. Sorry, as a promissory note for new bus drivers. Um, two of them. Make a motion to approve the bus driver promissory notes. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. Uh, two CEFP amendments. Uh, the first one is for the secure entrances, which. Uh, uh, would complete our secure entrances pretty much on all of our buildings. Yeah, we'll still have a few with, uh, with money we've been funded. We'll still have uh, uh, South Harrison Middle School and uh, Bridgeport Middle School, Bridgeport High School. Still need secure interest. Okay. Uh, is there a motion to accept the amendments? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. I would like to move item E uh, to the end of this because I think it would be premature to vote on a CEFP amendment before any vote on uh, 
uh, possible closures and consolidation. So if there's no objection, I'll move that to it to the end. Uh, brings us up to uh, item F, which is Liberty High School closure merger into Robert C. Bird High School. Is there a motion to get it on the floor for discussion? I make a motion to accept the superintendent's recommendation for Robert C. Bird and Liberty High School merger. Is there a second? Uh, discussion. Is there any? Is there any um, uh, plan on on? Uh, you know, I know, I understand where some people are coming from in regards to changing things or not changing things uh, regarding the name or colors or anything like that. Is there any plan on doing something like that, we, or we is that even open for discussion? Oh, it, I believe it is open for discussion, and it would be up to the board if they would want to proceed that after we see what the vote would be. And, and from my standpoint, I'm leaving the board. Uh, at the end of, of June, and I've stated all along, I am 100% for a new name. I know that uh, Mr. Rollins and I would differ on that. I do believe that the athletic funds that are left over from Liberty would more than pay for, for any of that, uh, if that's the case. Uh, and, and I do feel that, I mean, I've said it all along, it's, it just seems that, that when we do this, uh, one's losing everything and one's losing nothing. So I think there need to be some share heard in that, and, and because of that, I'm going to stick to my guns on that uh, uh, with the fact that, that I'm supporting the fact that I'm, I do believe that it should be another name. Now, after I'm gone, the rest of this board may choose to do that, but I don't have that option. This is my last option to try to push for that, so that's where I stand on that. So I think that if, if there is a opportunity to discuss it, then it should be discussed. Um, there should be some kind of... Um, you know, committee or some kind of uh, involvement with with the board and the superintendent to discuss that. So, if your if your intention is to do that, then I would applaud that. We can do that. We've already looked at just preliminarily what would have to be changed. I have a good list of what it what we're looking at. It, it is quite costly to change colors. Mm -hmm. You know, name a little different. So, um, definitely we'll pursue that. If, the, if it's the board's desire. And I hope. And I think that will take a motion from the board after this vote. And, and that's what I mean. I yeah. hope that, that I've only got one way to affect that, and I'll, I'll use it tonight. But I hope, once I'm gone, that this discussion continues and that happens because I do believe. And, you know, I've said it before. I'm the only one on here that represents the city of Clarksburg. Live, or not represents, that's uh, Miss Ward, lives in the city of Clarksburg. And, and, uh, I do agree with with several of the speakers that you know, and I'm I'm just putting my two cents in that that uh, it's the county seat and maybe it should be Clarksburg High, but that's for another board to decide, and uh, not for me. I can only vote the way I am, sitting here today. So, any other discussion? I think it should be left. If that occurs, it should be left up to the schools. They're going in together to decide on that. That's my personal opinion. And I, I, I can agree. With that. I just want to make sure that you know, one, like I said, I'll be John Q. Citizen soon enough. Maybe not soon enough. Uh, uh, so I have to do what I can while I'm here. We haven't. Next. We have. Yeah. So we we we're still in the discussion phase. Is there any other discussion on on watch on item? F, which is Liberty High School closure merger into Robert C. Bird High School. Not Any other? G. We haven't gotten to G. Okay. Okay. Uh, on, on item F. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? No. No. Motion or the, uh, the chair is, uh, passes three to two. So moves down to uh, item H, which is Mountaineer Middle closure and consolidation. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Or actually, G. Back up. Now you've got me. It's Washington Irving. We're going to take them together because one, uh, those should be listed together the same as, as Liberty High School. Uh, if there's no objection, we'll take G and H together. No. Or we have to do G? I think we should do G. We'll do G. 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 Okay. So Washington Irving Middle School closure. There has been a motion. Uh, second. And second. Any discussion? Just back to where you're talking about 
uh, names and everything, if they can consolidate and they consolidate into Liberty, uh, I feel that it should stay Liberty Middle School. Uh, I think the color should stay the same, and I think that the Mountaineer name, nickname should remain rather than make a change for everything. Uh, right. Well, so this is for Washington Irving. So with that, anything further? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Uh, item H, Mountaineer Middle Closure and Consolidation. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion to accept superintendent's recommendation of Mountaineer Middle School Closure and Consolidation. Is there a second? Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Uh, again, I'd like to echo what we talked about with the, uh, the, the, the discussion of the name changes or the discussion of the colors. I understand the uh, that th there might be options that wouldn't cost as much that we could still explore. And that's what I would prefer as a board member to do. Anything further? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. no. Moves us down to uh, item I and J. And if there is no objection, I would like to move item J before. No, no, we were. That was the yes. Do you wish to change your vote? Yeah, I wish to change my vote. Yes. If there's no objection, I would like to. I would like to move item J before item I because, depending on the outcome of item J, it's going to affect at least I know my uh, vote on item I. So. Uh, if there's no objection, we will take Salem Elementary School closure and consolidation. Is there a motion to bring it to the floor? I'll make a motion to bring Salem Elementary School closure and consolidation to the floor. Is there a second? Second. Discussion. And I'll lead off the discussion and say, I don't believe Salem needs to go anywhere. And, and there's a, there's a big, in my mind, there's a difference in, in small high school or high, small elementary schools and, and high schools. And I will say this, that if, depending on how this vote goes, if Salem ends up staying there, don't use this as the, as, as the, the end, that you've ended the uh, closure of that school. Use it as a beginning because uh, we've seen some things out of the city of Salem. I think they're in a position to work together, but make sure that you build and grow the population of Salem and that school. So that's that's all I'll say about that. But any other? Nothing else? I just think the town of Salem, uh, again, to support their school, you have to do something in Salem uh, as a community to support your community and the school, obviously. So as you do that, you're going to bring people in. You're at 182 right now, so. And you have a good building. You have yes, good I building guess. blocks. Yes. And good administration, good teachers, and there's no reason, in my opinion, to to monkey with it. So, with that, is there uh, any other discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. All opposed, no. 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 <laughs> I think it's, uh, back to item I, which is. Northview Elementary School, closure and consolidation. Is there a motion to get it to the floor? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded, and that brings up discussion. And the reason I say one affected the other is uh, there's an opportunity. I think we all see the, uh, we all see there are a lot of different issues going on with Northview that are different than anywhere else. You have, you know, a great neighborhood school there, but you have a building that's deteriorating. Uh, the reason that I, you know, am okay with this as long as it's not a merger is, is if we have the ability to pick up Northview, and I know it's not in the Northview community at that point, pick them up and move them as a whole into an empty building, which would be Mountaineer Middle, I believe. I mean, after this, uh, that's moving the same teachers into the same uh, classrooms into just a newer building. And if that's the case, and, and I applaud Mr. Riffle for, for coming, you know, with the uh, city. 
we can do this and 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 I'll tell you what, we plan for this. What if the city in the next two years, this doesn't happen next year, in the following year, you come up with a great plan, bring it, you know, but but you know, we're kind of in the late. I wish this would have started a couple of years ago, but you know, there's two years to uh, to worry about that. And maybe maybe that happens. Of course, we're that's not what the vote is here. It's to uh, to do the closure. But as I said, we're not consolidating at that point. If we do have to move it into the newer building at Mountaineer Middle, it's the same teachers moving in there. No one has to worry about their position. So that's my stance on that. So with that, is there anything further from the board? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. All right, that moves us down to uh, personnel matters. And they are before you. Uh, there is a typo. Uh, oh, we need to go back to the CEFP. That's, that's correct. So the CEFP, which is item E, comprehensive school realignment. Uh, and as I said, that, that is affected by that. So I'll, what I'll do is entertain a motion on that to be reflective of the vote that was taken tonight. So yeah, moved and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Personnel matters. Mr. Hogue has a recusal from Correct. state your recusal on, on the items. Right. Uh, a nephew uh, works for the maintenance department and he's up for a uh, contract. So you want to recuse yourself from all contract renewals. Right, all, all contract renewals. There is a typo, or not a typo, a name. Name correct. A-I-K-A, Ika, instead of Alicia, under what's the position? Washington Irving Middle School transfer. So with the recusal and that uh, is their motion. Oh, took the motion. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Board member comments, Mr. Tucker. We have heard over the la last week in particular and before that that we all sat up here and listen to you folks. And we did hear and listen, by the way. <laughs> yes, I did look at folks. I like to do that to see what they're saying, if that makes sense to you. But I also took notes on everybody that spoke here, any of the meetings. <coughs> Was there some that addressed everybody up here disrespectful like yes? Yes. But we listened and we heard you. I can say that for myself, and I know the other individuals did too. I know they did. But thank you all for coming to all the meetings. Appreciate you folks that were able to uh, watch at home. And if you weren't, you came here. You went to the other six locations. You've been there. You've listened. Listen to the folks that were with you. Thank you. No, I think Mr. Tucker said it all. Thanks, everybody, for coming. And we'll just go forward from here. Mr. Vaughn? No, thank you. And I have nothing for, I mean, it's been a, it's been a long couple of weeks, and I don't know that in a position like this, you're ever going to make everyone happy. Uh, and unfortunately, you just you can only do the best and we can look at each other. And I don't I don't have ill regard to anyone up here in the way they voted. And, and I hope the same with me. And, and it's democracy. So we'll uh, as we said, we'll go forward. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Well, motion.